We're here at the Sound Devices booth at NAB 2017 with Paul Isaacs. Paul, thanks for taking the time with us. Thank you for having me. You have some very exciting new products today that mm -hmm. uh, our audience, we're kind of mostly enthusiast filmmakers, mm -hmm. and uh, we're really excited to hear a little bit about the Mix Pre. Okay. Well, thanks for allowing me to babble on about these products. Yeah, the Mix Pre series comprises of two models, the Mix Pre 3 and the Mix Pre 6. Uh, the Mix Pre 3 is a three-channel, five-track, 96 kilohertz recorder, mixer, and USB audio interface. The uh, Mix Pre 6 is a six channel, eight track, 192 kilohertz recorder, mixer, and USB audio interface. Oh, okay. So that just gives you a quick summary of what they are. And let's give you, I want to give you a little bit of background. Sound Devices is known for mixer recorders for the film and TV market. Right. Um, the very high-end Hollywood movies, I mean, we've won, our customers have won Oscars for things like La La Land, Mad Max, or Star Wars, and shows like Breaking Bad. Yep. And um, what we've been wanting to do for quite a while is bring the build quality and the mic preamp quality that we're famous for, we wanted to bring that to a wider audience. Uh, the reasons why we're so popular in that high-end market is because of that build quality and that sound quality. Absolutely. So we want to bring this technology to a wider audience. People like videographers, DSLR users, YouTubers, um, podcasters, musicians, um, sound effects capture. These would also make a great supplement for production sound mixers as well. They, a great supplement to their 6 series or 7 series mixer. Huh? They're certainly not a replacement. Um, but you know, we can talk a bit more about that later. Yep. So these are really small, you know, compact tools. They I mean, are. this is the size of my hand. This can fit in a pocket almost. This is the three, and this is the six. So the six is obviously slightly larger to accommodate the extra input. input. So die cast aluminum chassis, rock solid. You can drop these, jump on them. They're gonna survive, they're gonna last forever. They're not plastic like our competitors. Um, this, I'd like to talk a little bit about the mic prees as yeah, well. I, I'm actually very curious about that because that's that's where Sound Devices stands out in the pro market. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we're really struggling in the non-pro market. Right. <laughs> um, and you guys have designed some new preamplifiers here. Yeah, and we call them the Cashmere mic preamps. We wanted to give them the name because they're they're so friendly and nice, and we're all Led <laughs> Zeppelin fans. And, so it all we call works. Them, it all and works. they sound smooth. So we call <laughs> we decided to call them Cashmere. I think the name sums them up really well. Yeah, but these these um, mic preamps are easily comparable with the mic preamp quality of our high end multi thousand dollar six series products. They're on, certainly on a par. It's a different design. Um, so we're looking. One of the important things about these products is that we want to make them easy for an audio novice, someone who's maybe less experienced with audio, to be able to capture the lowest noise, lowest distortion recordings. And maybe those types of customers are not as experienced in optimizing their levels. Right. So we wanted to design a mic preamp that was extremely forgiving, that would allow an audio novice to still capture super high quality audio. At the same time, so the way we've achieved that is to design is to design a discrete Class A mic preamp. There's no off-the-shelf ICs in our mic preamp. Yep. I mean, off-the-shelf ICs are pretty good these days, but they can only go so far. Exactly. Yep. Obviously, they're, they're, they're cheap, they're co yep. and that's why many competitors will do those, but this is a discrete Class A design. So individual components soldered uh -huh. to a circuit Optimized, board. yeah, yep. optimized for really low noise. Yep. That means in, in the real world, that if your noise is so low, we're talking about minus 130 dBV here, okay. A-weighted. That means that even if your levels are quite low and your signal level is slightly closer to the noise floor, mm -hmm. if then you need to amplify that back in post, the noise is still got, not gonna be noticed, yeah. notable when you normalize. Right, right. So always saying here is don't worry too much about it, as long as you're seeing some sort of signal, you're going to get great, clean, noise-free audio. Yep. On the other end of the mic pre-range... Which is a big problem. A big problem. You know, <laughs> if you crank up the volume too high uh -huh. and someone starts screaming into, a, into the mic, mm -hmm. the analog limiters in the, in the input chain are so great, they will prevent any over-distortion. You can really overdrive those limiters, and they are really good sounding limiters. And that's something I have not seen in any device less than 
three thousand dollars really before right really yeah. yeah that's what we feel as well <laughs> so we wanted to bring that to these users and i i recommend people try them out so we have a huge amount of gain on the mic please too i mean if you're going from input through the uh mic uh input stage and then through the fader of the mixer you get up to 96 dbs of gain so plenty there yep. um so the other aspects of the mic pre is they use 32-bit ADCs okay. that have a dynamic range of 120 dB. Obviously, you never get anywhere near the full 32-bit, um, but that is a very a top quality ADC that allows us to get a much wider dynamic range. Yeah. Um, okay, so on this subject of appealing to audio novices, yeah. and there's two things there. Obviously, the mic pre. Make it foolproof to capture great audio. Yeah. But the other thing is an interface that doesn't scare you off. Yeah. You just wanna, you wanna be able to create the content. You don't wanna get lost in the tech. So we sort of wanted to do something similar to what iPhone did for the cell phone. We wanted to make a very, um, we wanted to have a device that attracted you in to make you wanna use it. And it's really as simple as, there's two modes of operation, basic mode, which is how the unit ships, and then there's advanced mode, which is for more seasoned pros who want to get in there and down and dirty and you know adjust routing, different time code settings, maybe do ISO recording, all these other things which are more advanced things. But basic mode is a simple plug and play mode where you just get your mic, plug it into a channel, turn the volume knob, and then hit record. Brilliant. And it's as simple as that. You don't need to know so much more than that. And that will be in that mode a simple stereo. Uh, mix recorder. Okay. If you really want to start to get into all the other ISO channel recording yep. and all the time code and stuff like that, you can switch to advanced mode. And it's very easy. Can you, you can use the touch screen. Didn't mention it had a yeah, touch right. screen. Touch screen. <laughs> big, big, big change. And actually, the touch screen is a fundamental part of this time. We haven't just put a touch screen in here because it's a gimmick and it's cool. Right. There's actually a reason for it, a design philosophy reason for it. And that is because we wanted to keep this interface very uncluttered and simplified. Yep. Some people say it looks like a toy. It's not a toy. It's meant to really make it easy to focus on the art rather than the science. Right. Um, right. So here's your volume knobs. I can press these knobs too. Oh, okay. So do my channel settings. Ah, so that's okay. essentially like your yeah. PFL and, and, and right. is it PFL as well? Is that what Yeah, we can, we can solo and all sorts of things. I mean, we're not in advanced mode at the moment, so, yeah. but in, in basic mode, you can select your type of input, you know, whether it's a, a mic, a line, a USB source or oh, whatever great. here. Okay. You can set okay. your phantom, your low cut, yep. you've got pan. Yep. Um, this is basic mode at the moment. But so you can see very easy to set up. You just press and then press again to access those things. Yep. Let me just switch this into advanced mode now. And while doing so, I will um, show you the menus. I mean, if you can use an iPhone, you can use one of these. Um, you can see at the top here, we have three dots, which indicate the number of pages. Yep. And so I can just toggle between those various pages of menus. If I'm going to my system menu here, click on mode. Now you can see we've got basic and advanced. Very good. So ships in basic mode, straight out of the box, you're going to be recording great sound. Yep. But if you're a seasoned pro and want to get down and dirty with those features, switch to advanced and now press the home button. Now if I press a, a channel input here, uh -huh. yep. now you see I have three pages. I can arm here. Ah, very good, okay. I can arm, I can solo. Yep. Ah, here. Okay. I can do individual solos, like uh, non-exclusive mm -hmm. or mutually exclusive. Yep. Um, um, Let's get, then I've got my trim gain. So in advanced mode, you have a dual stage. Okay. So trim and a fader. Ah, excellent. In basic mode, it's just a single, single gain control. stage. Yeah, okay. um, which also is much easier right. for uh, a less experienced yeah. user. Right. Um, and then we have pan, the second page. You can see this is where we select our inputs. So I can go from off to mic to line to aux in one and two. <laughs> so we haven't spoken about the aux in connector here. Yeah. This, pr this has multiple different functions. There can be a two-channel line input. Okay. It can be a plug-in power mic. Okay. So um, you get a lavalier, you can get a return from camera. Uh -huh. Okay. And then there's a mode specifically called camera, which is like a camera return mode. Okay. Okay. And that switches the monitor into a more useful camera return monitoring mode. And then there's a time code mode, where this becomes a time code input. Ah, oh, very good. And time code coming in here gets stamped in the files. While on the subject of um, Let's just carry on here for a yeah, minute, then we'll, we'll touch sure. on, on yep. time code. So coming back to my input, 
So it aux in, and then we can also bring in USB feeds from the computer ah. onto this channel, and I can bring in, so I now can mix on the fader there, USB. So this really, because this can simultaneously act as a USB audio interface and a recorder, there's no other device can do that simultaneously. It's usually an either or. Right. That means now we can treat the computer as another source, just like a mic or a line. And that opens up some interesting opportunities, especially for podcasters for podcast, and musicians yeah. and all sorts of things. Yeah. And backup situations. Yep. So it's, that's a, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that it gets used. And, and at the same time, you're still recording to yeah. the device here. So even though it's in audio interface mode, it's also still exactly. a recorder and mixer. Exactly. Yeah. So now I can mix on here and record to the local oh. SD card. So and it's almost like a, it's a control surface in some respects too, as a mixer. You I could mean, think of it like that. Yeah. Yeah. So all sorts of options. Anyway, so coming out of it, you've got your Phantom and you've got all various other things. You can link inputs too. So if you've okay. got a stereo source, yeah. I can link one and two and three and four yeah. and five and six. Um, we'll get to channels five and six in a minute. Um, so let's talk about time code. I think it, we don't really need to talk about the obvious record, stop and play. Right. That's <laughs> <We're good>. self-explanatory. <laughs> self so in terms of time code, this is a reader. Okay, it's not a generator. Right. So it works great with DSLRs. Mm -hmm. If you're you know, a videographer who's using it like a GH4 or a GH5, in fact, we've got a GH5 set up just down there working with this, or you're working with an A7S or A7S, or any of these types of cameras, Canon, then you can take the, eight, you can first of all, take your stereo out into the mic input on the camera. Uh -huh. We can set the level on here low enough so it's not going to overdrive the camera. Yep. Going to bypass the mic preamps on the, yep. on the camera. Yep. So you're going to get the clean sound from here. And then mix all here and record on the camera. You can obviously capture your individual, individual tracks here too, right. which is great because now, by virtue of the fact that I'm taking the time code from the camera, and connecting it into the HDMI port here, right. the recorded file on here is going to have exactly the same time code as the camera. Now, you just bring in the camera's file, yep. the mix pre file, into your Premiere or Final Cut Pro, or whatever you use, yep. and just push one button, push one button, and they're synced. And, they're synced. and now you have the benefit of being able to remix your mix. So if your mix from that was recorded live was wrong, like you forgot to turn a fader up or it's too loud or someone coughed on a particular channel, you can now remix that. And that gives you so much more creative ability. Absolutely. It's, it's called double system sound. It's been used in the high end world for a long time, but this is a huge benefit to others as well. Yeah, as especially well. especially the way you've done it. So what's, what's curious to me and I think really impressive to me is you've chosen you're trying to, you know, you had to keep the price point at a point where the enthusiast could 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 invest and get in. Um, but what you chose to do was invest in the preamp, the analog limiters, but also make the possibility to bring time code in if you decide you want to do that. Right. And via HDMI direct from the camera or using a time code generator externally. Yeah. Um, so, so it can grow with the people that, that get into the system. Yes. Yeah, so like this auxiliary input, which I said was like a line mic or camera return yep. or time code, it, yep. it's all can be configured from the interface. Yeah, brilliant. So, you know, other things on the home screen, which you're seeing here, is just touch the meters to see different meter views. Different meter views. You've got your the, ISO metering, plus yep. your, your mix. Yeah, you can even see your USB returns. Oh, wow, great. Um, you've got your file names, uh, file list here, yep. and you can edit names and file names great. from this interface. One thing, this is a stretch. And this is just a wish list for me, but I, I'm curious to see what you say. On my 633, I can connect a keyboard, or I can use the Wingman app right. to to communicate with right. this and do all the metadata. I can do both entry. on this too. I can do both yes. on this too. So it's got a keyboard input here, but probably better, as you mentioned, is the Wingman app. It's yes. fully better. And the nice thing is, the Bluetooth is actually built in. Ah, uh -huh. so you don't have a separate so dongle or anything. Now yeah. you can control this via an iPhone direct from here, and you can monitor your metering, yep. you can monitor your time code can start and stop recording, and you can edit your file names and all that sort of stuff. Brilliant, that is brilliant, good. <laughs> well, let's, uh, do you want to talk about power? Yeah, that's a good point. So this is another very important thing for obviously a portable um, mobile package like this. How can it be powered? So there's a lot of options. Standard, let's just take a look here. If you remove the battery pack, um, by the way, I just want to show you, this is where the SD card is. Okay slotted in. Um, you also have this Allen wrench here, 
which is great for if you want to mount this on a tripod or a DSLR, to stick it in the hole down here, and then you have a oh, captive screw. Little quarter inch 20. Yeah, quarter 20 right on top. Okay. So that's all magnetized and held in there. Now the unit comes with standard with a 4AA battery pack, and that's depending on what you've got powered up on the device, how many phantoms, how many condensers you're working with. It's gonna give you something between two and three hours. Okay. Um, we have an, eight, an optional eight-way AA battery pack as well, which takes four this side and four this side. Okay. So that will give you double the power, double the battery run time, three, uh, five to six hours. Okay. Yeah. If you're wanting to run all day or even all week, then we have <laughs> this um, dual L Sony L-mount okay. um, optional battery caddy. So you can see here, we're using the slim ones here nice. on both sides. Yep. Um, you can obviously use the full-size ones. Yeah. ones well. Those full-size ones that easily give you a week of recording, no problem. Brilliant. Um, so you can meet anyone's production needs there, pretty yep. much. So on top of that, and this is very important, is the USB-C port, and I think we're the first device in this category to use USB-C. Yeah. This makes a great interface, your new MacBook Pro that has USB-C on it. Yeah. They just work hand in hand so smoothly. And you're actually powering over USB. Yes, yeah, so, so we're I powering. Don't have no batteries at no all. No batteries in that case. That's brilliant. So even if you're working with an older Mac, which only has USB-A ports, you just use the adapter cable and plug this in. Um, so powering and USB audio all via this one connector. Okay. And you can even file transfer from here too. Brilliant. If you don't want to remove the SD card. Yep. Um, so yeah, powering options are great. I mean, you can use this there. We, there's a USB-C um, power wall adapter. Okay. Um, and you get these batteries with USB. Yep, you, can, sure. you can use for, if you want, even more power in a bag. Yep. So yep. there's many options out there. That is great, that is great. And, that, and some of your competitors struggle with that, I think. That there have been some other good devices developed that took a slightly different approach. They went with time code, didn't necessarily invest quite as much. They didn't, certainly didn't have uh, optical limiters in, right. the, in the signal chain. Um, and then powering options were a little dicey, but here it looks like you've opened all the options. Really. We haven't really spoken about this much because this isn't really the show, but do you have musicians who tune into your... Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay, so we've, we've spoken about videography a lot. We've yeah. spoken about podcasts quite a bit. Yeah. We haven't really focused on the musician. Now, I'm a musician, I'm involved my main love in life. I'm, I'm a pianist, um, classical, jazz, piano. I okay. play in big productions, all sorts of things. I play in various bands. Yep. For me, as a, as a musician's tool, this is great. Last week, we did a live show, and it was uh, me on stereo piano. Um, we had a vocalist, a double bass, okay. and a guitarist. Vocals, double bass, stereo piano, and then we used this input for the guitar. Okay. And we mixed everything on here. Uh -huh. um, everything was new here, using the preamps here. We took this into a DI, and fed it into the front of house console and they just raised the fader. Wow. But everything was done wow. from here. Okay. People couldn't imagine. We, while we mixed it, we also recorded it on the SD card. We had the full multi-track recording. And at the same time, we were USB audio streaming into Pro Tools. Oh, wow. We did all three things separately. Yeah. And I've got the recording over here. I would love you to take a I listen to it, listen. get your yeah. opinion on yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so this is a great tool for small ensemble gigging. Okay. You know, like you're a small quartet or a singer-songwriter. Yeah. And you're performing live. It's also a great tool if you're a singer-songwriter wanting to capture your ideas in much higher quality. I have one of these set up on the side of my piano, got my DPA mics plugged in and my vocal mic. When I get an idea on the way home from work and I want to lay this down, I capture it and it's clean. And that often becomes the basis of actually a full-on production in Pro Tools. Um, I, I use it for teaching. Um, I record my students on this, and then I give them an SD card to take away so they can listen to their performance. Okay. That's a really powerful tool to help uh, your students learn how they're sounding. Yeah. I use it for you know, just many things. Um, Houses of Worship is another good one. Okay. To be able to yeah. take the console feed yep. into, and then a couple of ambient mics, uh -huh. bring them in, and you have now a, a really nice balanced recording, yep. live recording. Absolutely. Absolutely. Many options, and if you're a traveling musician, Put one of these mixed pre-3s in your bag and it's there for wherever you are. So yeah. for musicians, it's a great tool. Yeah, great, and brilliant. The, the mic pre's will be <laughs> way up there compared to what's on the market. Yeah. We're, we're gonna be competing with a very high end. Excellent, excellent. I can't wait to actually get my hands on one and actually give it a try. And also, I'm very 
impressed. I don't know how you have time to do anything. You're designing these, <laughs> plus you're teaching people piano, plus you're gigging. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, and I've got two kids. And you've got two children. <laughs> well, I, I, some, something's got to suffer a long way. Some, my sanity, I think, more than anything. It's probably it. <laughs> well, um, Paul, thanks so much. It was a thanks great for overview. Talking, it was great. Um, we're really excited to get our hands on one and actually start putting them to use. Thank you. All right. Take care. Um,